Well, while many of you may agree with my point of view, frankly, others strongly oppose it. And I'm certainly not afraid to hear the other side, so let's just see what happens when I take the hot seat. My challengers today, former president of the Women's Media Center and a Fox News contributor, Jamu Green, and Newsday columnist and Fox News contributor, Ellis Hennigan. Good to have both of you here today. Let's jump in on debt ceiling negotiations. We've had people march to the podium and say the world is effectively going to come to an end if we don't get this resolved. I think it's serious, but has it been pushed a little too hard? No. Okay. No, it hasn't. No, because of some of the reasons you mentioned and some you haven't. Governor, do haven't don't, you, don't you, in your own family, you and the birthday girl, Mrs. Huckabee, right? I mean, Thanks for you, joining me and wishing you her guys, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mrs. She'll H. take birthday wishes from liberals. <laughs> so she really will. You know. But listen, I mean, you pay your bills. You pay your mortgage, right? You pay the electric and the gas and the, and the Boy, car payments so. and all that stuff, right? Yeah, no, and, we do. And, yes, and, we you, do. and you understand, as Washington seems not to, that bad stuff would happen if you didn't. Why is it that your Republican colleagues out on the campaign trail and in the House seems so blind and, 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 frankly, a little reckless about that. Well, see, I don't think it's a matter that they don't think we ought to pay our bills. I think that they understand we shouldn't run up a bunch of bills we never could pay in the first place. This is the problem with government is done. It's not that we say, let's default, but let's quit borrowing money we don't have and spending money that there's no way we'll ever be able to pay back. But the back. thing is, there are so many Republican members in the House who are saying, let's default. It's okay not to pay our bills. You said earlier, we have to get past the plain politics and start actually legislating. All of those new House Republican members who are just so reckless, and in the words of former uh, Senator Alan Simpson, a, a strong Republican, they are putting pettiness over patriotism. Now here's what I don't understand. The, the Democrats have all gotten their talking points, and they're using this phrase, balanced approach. I mean, that's right off the fax machine. I understand where it's coming from. But balanced approach means let's raise taxes. No, Governor, it doesn't really mean that. It means that the people Alice. at the top ought to share some of the burden. We don't want to don't just stick it to grandma. Don't the we want those corporations? most of the taxes. Look, I agree with you. Let's get rid of the loopholes. Okay. But let's don't raise the tax rates. That's what a lot of people are wanting to do, raise tax rates. That's counterproductive. If you want to lower rates but create a situation in which you don't have the loopholes and you don't have people who are gaming the tax system, then you know what? I think the Democrats ought to adopt the fair tax model. The fair tax doesn't tax productivity. It tax our consumption. And when that happens, then everybody's going to have skin in the game in a different kind of way, and rich people who buy more things will be paying more taxes. But Governor, don't you have a problem with the fact that a hedge fund manager who takes his you know, limo town car into the office every day, that he is paying a lower tax rate than the assistant who's setting up his meetings, setting up his lunches? There, there's a problem Jimmy, with that. I would agree that if it's, if it's balance we're talking about, and balance means that we're going to create a system in which people whose taxes are assessed at the point of uh, however the income is raised. That's one thing, but that's not what I'm hearing. It's let's go after a higher rate. That's what I'm not Governor, for. Governor, as an old populist from Arkansas, though, does it not trouble you a little bit when you see the statistics, and, and we've all seen them, that say more and more of the wealth in America concentrated into fewer and fewer hands at the top? You know that's been happening for the last decade, hasn't I, I worry less that a few people have done well. I worry more that a lot of people have done more poorly. See, I don't believe in a closed economic system, Ellis, so there's only so much of the pie, and once it's gone, there's not any more. The economy can grow to a larger amount and give more people the capacity to be prosperous. I do worry that we've got almost 15 people out of work, and I worry that this president has spent almost a trillion dollars so-called stimulating the economy, and it has had a counterproductive effect on getting those people to work and having them a job. The top 2 percent of the most wealthiest people in the top 2 percent of the country own the entire pie and they're not willing to share it and, and we are right now taking in less revenue than we were back when the Korean War was going on like this is 50 years ago this is the same amount of revenue we're taking in. this that's not a balanced approach the two things I want the Democrats to quit saying are balanced approach and George W Bush is blaming is blamed for all of it and and change the talking points you know, we've got to go our time is up otherwise I would love to continue the discussion <laughs> oh. <laughs> Jamu, thank you, and Ellis, it's great to have you here for the hot seat. Thank you very much.